so we come to the Jake's project, mm -hmm. which sees you perform on um, tracks produced, um, some of them by TC, um, and uh, also combines it with your dubstep productions. What's what, what was the thought process behind the Jake's project? Um, I just wanted it to be it to be a sort of like a picture of where I am right now, and where I am right now is in between both of them. So. And uh, say, for, uh, let's just go through the tune. So, haters, you know, what's what's that? What's that all about? Without seeing it's just you know. yeah, <laughs> it was just about haters, yeah. But no, no, no. It's just um, the idea of it, about haters is like if you if you're not being hated, really, even a little bit, you're not doing your job. Everyone needs a little bit of hate, just like everyone needs a little bit of love. So if there isn't a 10 page um, thread on some forum somewhere saying, you know, this this guy's done such and such and da 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 then yeah. you haven't reached a certain level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with you. You, you, you ain't on that. It, it's quite funny, there are people who go, dogs are nice here. I'm going to address the issue right But there are people who go, oh my god, yeah, when he was a ticket, I'm the same person, you fools. <laughs> Don't think I ain't out of that business. I'm still there, yeah? From the spot. Swerve from the curb. Running around my brain. And uh, Swerve, what's that all about? Um, that one was just a little, it's almost like a setting in the club. I wanted to just, and I say a picture, <laughs> paint another picture, but when you're in the club and it's, you're looking around and what's going on, and, Sometimes people think they know what's going on, and when it truly they don't. If you just peel the surface of what's really going on in that club, you see it, and you're like, well, right, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Bye. Um, huge track off the album, Rock the Bells. You know, it's had big support from um, Scream on, on, his, on his Stella sessions yeah. and Rusko on. It's essential mix, you know. Did you know as soon as you made that that, uh, that was big? Did you have an inkling, or was it that, that, that had, someone else going, "My God, that this yeah, is ridiculous"? I had no idea. <laughs> I, I made it, uh, and I hadn't actually finished it screaming. <laughs> I'm joking, but, um, but yeah, well, I didn't actually finish it, and I sent it to screaming. I was like, "Bro, check that out." He was, yeah, and he's notorious. For uh, playing dubs, he played it by Bon CD on his show, and from that from that one show, everyone was like, "What is that tune?" I've seen the reaction to it on your MySpace. Yeah, you know, yes. Rusko leaving caps lot. Yeah, like, yeah, almost leave me alone. Don't don't let me listen to this tune anymore. Yeah. I, saw, I saw him the other week actually in Fabric, and he was like, uh, uh, "Him and Belinda." And Belinda was like, "Jay." I've seen him running around the house like a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and running around the house. Nice little rest. Why did you join my beloved call? Sir, to kill, sir! Warface. Boy. Was it, you know, just a great um, idea that you've got from the vocal and, you know, you matched it? Well, it was, I was angry that day. That much is obvious. Yeah. <laughs> I was angry that day. I was vexed. And I thought I needed to put it down in the computer rather than run around doing mad and angry to people so I thought I know what I'm gonna get that sound voice that I searched for and it took me a while and went in and made the tune and yeah it's been it's been really well received and how how did Hench come about? You know, from what happened in your computer to thinking, you know, to the name first of all. Um, how did that? How did the name happen? Um, the name happened when I was sat in the back of a car with White Boy and Headhunter, and I was just like, we should do it. We should form a crew. We've been making we've been making tunes for a little while, battling each other, and uh, I was like, you know what? We should come up with a name. And I came up with it in like 200 meters. And the, the ethos behind it, the harder, never caught hustle, and then separate out. It's really weird. So, what, you thought of the phrase first? Yeah. Um, no, well, yeah, what I, thought, I, thought, I, I thought of Hench, and I was like, right, Hench, what can I get with Hench? And literally, as we were driving in the car, I was like, Hench, harder, harder, never caught hustle. And I was like, that's it. 
genius. Simple. More face! Uh, so um, there was the um, Jake's Jake's Warface original. Mm -hmm. How did the uh, drum and bass D Mines remix come about, and um, you know what are your thoughts on that? Uh, came about. I, I said to John, and, and John put the idea on my head as well. I have to say, um, you need some drum and bass remixes. I think you said something more. But um. They made an absolutely dance floor destroying tune. It kills it. And they've, even, they've already made another remix. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, can I have that one as well? All about? Just pure dance floor. Just, right. Just wanna... And were you there from the very beginning of making that tune or was it something that TC had written the backing of and then you... Um, he's, he had a sort of like a little loop of it, but then... Um, Actually, no, 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 yeah, he did have a little loop bit, but I had nothing to do with it at the start. Came back, and he, he didn't sort of like put most of the flesh and bones to the tube. And I was like, oh, I'm not coming and doing a little thing on that. Because it's, it's almost like a lazy vibe, but it's just, yeah. just straight down. It catches people differently. Yeah, it's a, it's a different tune. Uh, it's, it, it may be marmite to some people, but a lot of people seem to be like, yeah, I, th I think it changes the way kind of a dance floor groove. They might be yeah. going for it in a certain way and then you put that on, so you yeah, see a DJ like, play that, and then it's like, whoa, yeah, okay. Yeah. And every dance needs that. Yeah, exactly. The Cuss Cream is um, you know, quite quite a different vibe. Yeah, te techno vibe. Yeah. Uh, Cuss Cream is probably the oldest, the oldest one in the batch, and I've I made it a while ago, but I've almost always played it in every set I've played, and a lot of people still play it as well. And it's it's really weird because I didn't give it to many people, and every time I played it in the dance, everyone was like, "Whoa!" Because that B line on it, it's just chunky. Yeah. yeah. I want to go for a housey, almost housey vibe. It's quite chunky, isn't it? Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's very, it's just almost full to the floor. Yeah. And you, you're just straight in, all the noises and sounds that are in your face. It was just, it was designed to just smash a dance floor, basically. And how, how does the Bristol sound differ from, say, the London sound? Is there a difference? Yeah, there is, definitely. Um, I think they're a little more, more uh, experimental in Bristol. Right. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are your your pioneers all over the shop and there are your guys that lead the way but there seems to be a lot more just free thought and everyone's just is it, 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 there's a there's always a different flow to this thing. yeah i mean every, every time you come here anyone comes here from another city they're also like, you know, it's chill. some people come here and say it's a, it's a countryside it's not i mean there's a lot of greenery around yeah. and there is a lot of greenery around <laughs> but um I mean, it's, there's a different flow here, and I think there's a there's more unity as well. <laughs> 